right? So okay, you see the recording has already started. Um, as usual, we start with announcements. I hope you guys are doing well. Then first see the 10 academic team on the call. I can see Mary is there. Uh, Money Ten Academy. Mariam, I can see Mariam is there. So let's start with the announcement. So starting from my end, as you can see, the someone with, with Ten Academy, please let people in, as I'm going to go through the announcements. So we start the announcement from my side. As you can see, we have already shared with you the, the calendar or the schedule for this week. I'm also sure that you have access to the weekly challenge document. But the, another announcement for today, the introduction to the week challenge is not going to start at nine as usual. It's going to start at 10 as you can see on the schedule. So this is because we have someone from Arumna who is going to also help us take us through the the week challenge as alongside with Anastasia and other tutors as Yabeba is not uh, available for this week because he's on the holidays. Uh, in the afternoon, we have uh, a Q&A &A, Q &A session with a guest uh, from Kunumi. Also, the Q&A session is about week eight challenge. So it means today, it's all about to understand the weekly challenge better. Then it's tutorials will be starting by tomorrow. So I guess those are the announcements from my side. I don't know if Mary or Mariam has something to say terms of the announcements. Yeah, thanks, Everest. I I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, yeah, we can, yeah, hear, we you can hear you. All right. Okay, I had a quick announcement. So it's something um, that we are going to be introducing. So moving forward, uh, we'll be leaving half of the, um, we'll be using half, uh, the second half of our standards for, for a hot seat session. So basically, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with hot seats, it's basically getting somebody, one person or uh, one trainee will be on a spotlight and all other trainees uh, will, be, will be asked to ask this particular person uh, any sort of questions they want to know. It's more like a session to get to know each other better and all that. So it's going to be more like rapid fire kind of question. And whoever is on the spotlight will be required to respond in a, in a particular, um, in a specific number of time. You can say maybe let's say in, in 10 seconds, you need to have uh, responded. So we're going to introduce that and hopefully um, as we, it's going to be on daily standards starting from tomorrow. And whoever is going to be on a hot seat will be informed the evening prior, uh, yeah, prior the hot seat session. So I hope that is clear. We're going to be doing that every day. And one of the days it will be involving the 10 academy team. So basically trainees for the four days of the week and one day of the week any person from the academy team that's my announcement over to you thanks mary maybe you can take take some takes from the trainees on how they are feeling about this, this new thing um i can see rafa is uh, like uh, uh that's probably scary but i don't think it is because um yeah, it's all about also it's something you can that can be helpful to let your train your colleagues, your the peers know more about you, I think so. And also prepare you in terms of public speaking, 
and also breathing confidence like you know publicly so. yeah and maybe to add to that everest it's not meant to be like a a, a, a q and a for coding is some, something that is meant to be in a very fun way trying to know more about you so maybe we say if it's rougher okay what is your favorite color you're supposed to respond maybe in three seconds then you just say whatever color like is then more like things about you that we want to know about you but it's not supposed to be a very complex kind of session so and uh, and so we'll see from this week we will get feedback okay. so now it's, it's not clear it's not about technical side it's not about things that the, the general thing that people can ask you about you, so you're there to, to respond. And I'm sure that um, we will probably provide more instructions. Um, and I believe some of the questions will be need to be answered, or you can choose to probably don't answer some of the questions. Right, Mary? Uh, Sam, you don't know, you can always say pass. I think we, we are going to, to share a lot more information about this within uh, the day so that by tomorrow everybody's... Yeah, but don't take... It's not going to be like... It, it's not a complex kind of situation. It's basically what we would like to know about you and everybody's allowed to ask. So it means that does, does it mean that we're starting by today? or tomorrow no 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 no. so we'll start tomorrow so i thought it would be a little bit unfair to kind of abruptly start yeah. on that so yeah. tomorrow so tonight we will inform the person who's the first person who's opening for us tomorrow then we move forward like that so everest i also don't know if you, uh, i could hand over to you about the budget thing more like uh, an announcement but So I think uh, you can go ahead with it. Do you want to announce it from here? All right. Okay. Also, announcement is that, uh, yeah, no problem. So, other announcement is that uh, oh, we are going to be um, like awarding some badges of uh, trainees who you know who've been exceptional not just um not just content wise but all through in different categories so basically community participation how you fared um your presentation your quality of code so we are going to also kind of we'll put the announcement in terms of the details on how the badges uh will be awarded and what categories will be there and it will be happening every week so we we'll also put more details on slack about that okay thank you very much mary for the announcements i i guess that these two changes are going to be like add some values to the community and i'm really sure that it's it's going to be more fun and then easy does it so now let's start our daily standard if there's no any other announcement from Harry's team mariam or tutors this month you don't have an announcement please let me know so you just keep no announcement no announcement from my end all right so as you know today it's all about presentations to just let your colleagues know how you did the the challenge so far then the also another thing for them to learn from you and also be also practicing how to of course present your work something that you really really face so much when you start working for the jobs so but before we start I um, just want to confirm if, if Martin is on the call and also Biniam because they have already volunteered for this. <clears throat> if the time allows, we can pick a random person after them. 
but I will encourage everyone to just volunteer to present. It doesn't really matter how far you did. So it's all about practicing, making sure that you can deliver what you have done in terms of presentation. And also be ready to share the challenge you have been facing, especially you don't need to have it like done very accurately so you can present whatever progress you have, then your colleagues can know um, where they can even support. Also the tutors can know that they can support you. So I guess, but before that, let's start by letting us know how the weekend, weekend was or the week overall. So let's hear from people just sharing how the week was and also how they enjoyed their weekend. Anyone willing to share with us? So, hi, Biniam. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so, uh, last week was uh, better than the previous ones for me because uh, I've been able to adjust some of my working styles and uh, I think it's been uh, effective. Uh, I've managed to complete the challenges, even though I faced uh, quite a few uh, blockers along the way. Mm, regarding my weekend, I've rested well and uh, I've also went through some of the concepts I've been struggling with throughout the past weeks so that I can prepare uh, to choose uh, uh, a career, a career path that suits me well. So, uh, yeah, that was my weekend in my last week. Thank you. All right. How are you feeling for this week? <clears throat> I yeah, saw uh, you said it's moving so fast. How are you feeling? <clears throat> uh, yeah, the weeks are going so fast. Maybe I'm concentrated on the challenges and I've not uh, noticed uh, that we are uh, actually about to finish, or we're almost about to finish. So uh, that's what I mean by it's going too fast. Uh, and uh, the week eight challenge seems like uh, another machine learning challenge. I'm excited to uh, get another chance to uh, improve some of the machine learning concepts I've been struggling with last time. So yeah, it, it, it would, it's, going, it's going to be great. Thank you. Wow. Thanks for the optimism. <clears throat> and also hopefully that is going to be better and we are yeah week eight we just we just came from far now we are here also see shaka kevin uh, is not able to use the mic he said that overall performance in week seven was not good due to being new in data engineering field uh although uh I didn't, he did not successfully complete all the tasks, but learned some of the basic concepts in data engineering and working with LIDAR data. <coughs> Hopefully that, hope to apply what he learned in other data engineering challenges and do them better. Like uh, the weekend was good because he rested and read Bible, chilled with the family. Thanks, Shaka, for sharing, sharing. So, so we understand that everyone is learning, and yeah, you can be new to the concept, but promise you can be better afterwards. Afterwards. So, how you did, yeah? And also, let's hear from also other people. Michael, uh, Daisy. All right, you did, yeah? Michael, Daisy, in the order. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, okay. So last uh, last week wasn't good for me. Uh, at first, I was having a bit of problem understanding the challenge, and I was also caught up with some other things. And something related to family came up on the afternoon of Friday, and I wasn't able to finish much of the work that we've been given. Uh, I've tried to submit the challenges, but the submissions, but I just found out that. Uh, there was something to submit related to, to the debate session. I thought it was only uh, the debate session that we were supposed to attend, but 
there was also a report that we were supposed to write, but I don't, I, I failed to submit that as well as uh, I haven't finished the challenge completely and I've been trying to do some of the parts that I've missed, but uh, still not good, but uh, I'm optimistic for this week and I'm ready for a new challenge. And uh, I think I've refreshed up enough for this week and uh, yeah, I'm excited to go for this week. Well, oh, thank you, Didier. Despite the challenges, I'm uh, glad to see that you, you made the way through. And uh, yeah, I'm also excited for this week and uh, I'm glad to hear that you are also excited. Hope that it's going to be good. Let's move with Daisy. The next person is Michael. Oh, okay. Sorry, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I trust all of you are doing well. So for me, I find that um, week seven was a lot better than week six if I'm to compare the two. Of course, there's still quite a bit of a steep learning curve to it. Um, I was quite flustered the first couple of days just trying to understand um, what leader data is and how to go about manipulating it. And uh, I got so much help just trying to understand uh, uh, the project concept through the tutorials and also just through liaising with uh, some of my colleagues. Um, and I like I'm finally seeing the concept of what Yabebal was trying to say about like going up a steep hill um, and just seeing how much more you're able to do because um, this week at least I was able to successfully implement um, concepts like CICD, which are things I really struggled with like at the beginning. Um, and then also just going about uh, building packages and uh, creating a documentation and hosting it. Um, those were really new to me um, and challenges that I really liked because they stretched me to an extent. Um, for the task, I was not really able to do it to 100% completion. Um, I really struggled with trying to um, implement the TWI index. Um, but I hope that is something that I can implement um, going forward. Um, so finally, for the weekend, Nairobi is very cold. Like this this month, generally has just been very cold. So for me, I just stayed indoors and uh, binged some documentaries. Yes, I am excited for this week's challenge. Um, yes, to just like. Um, it's, it's just really exciting to see how how far you can stretch. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Daisy. And uh, yeah, thanks for the effort you put in. Um, I'm sure that you were able to, to submit and that you, are, you will also be able to, to just increment uh, whatever thing that you have left. So you will get that time, I'm sure, just as you know, we keep improving what we did, and especially when we are done with the training of this, um, these 12 weeks, you know, we go into another phase of job search, stuff like that. And those are the most beautiful time to just uh, beautify your pods, uh, make sure that the work is improved, that you can really showcase to the employers. So thanks for sharing. We move to Michael. Then the next person is Salam. Okay, good morning. Good yeah. morning, Michael. Uh, yeah, last week was, uh, it was somehow good week for me. I got a new concept about the, uh, the new libraries, PIDAL and uh, PIDAL and about the LiDAR data. And it was fascinating, even though I didn't uh, perform well. And I got also good insights on the debate session. Uh, my group mates were so helpful. And last week was a good week for me. Uh, about my uh, weekend, I, I, I go and chill out with my friends and I saw some documentation that I should work on. And and I'm also optimistic about the, this week's task as well as my future journey. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Um, thanks for sharing. Uh, let's hear from Salam. OK, 
Okay, hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, last week, I would say I had a, a more productive week compared to the previous weeks. Uh, regarding the non-technical, uh, it was overall good. I've learned a lot of things on the, the debating. And when it comes to the technical part, uh, for the first three days, it was a little bit challenging for me since I was trying to understand what the overall concept of uh, last week challenge was and how I'm going to implement it. But uh, once I got to understand that, it wasn't uh, a difficult thing afterwards. And uh, I, I would say I overall did uh, a satisfying work uh, on uh, doing the tasks. Um, I just uh, didn't do one thing from the subtask stuff with the TWI and it was because of a technical issue. Uh, but besides that, I would say uh, uh, I, I did uh, somewhat well and I'm really happy about that. And on the weekends, uh, well, I was really exhausted from the work uh, uh, on the week, so I just rested at home and that was how I spent the entire week. All right. Thank you, Saram. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, glad to hear that overall week se seven was great good than week six. Yeah, so it means uh, it was getting better. And I hope, I hope that week eight is going to also be good than week seven. Yeah, that curve will be really nice. Let's hear from Stella. Then we go to test five. Then we kick off the presentation. Good morning. Um, my week seven was good. I managed to do most of the tasks, and uh, but initially it was very challenging. But thanks to consulting my peers, um, I was able to manage. Um, at least I was able to do some bits of the other projects, and also I'm glad that as I learned much about packaging and I was able to package the project. Um, during the weekend, uh, I just rested and now I'm looking forward to week eight's project and learning all about causal uh, graphs. Yeah, um, I'm wishing everyone else uh, a good week ahead. Thanks so much, Stella. Thanks for sharing. <clears throat> And uh, I hope that you you managed to to deal with any brokers that you met, as I can hear from you. So, did you meet any like a big broker during week 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 seven? Yeah. Um. Initially, I did not know how to work with the leader data, so um. I just found myself continuously consulting uh, some people, my friends uh, from the team, and um, I got to understand a, a little more and also did more research. Also, um, our AWS instance did not work for like half of the week. Uh, so uh, that was a big block. And then a few days, um, there was some network issues, but I was I was still able to manage um, my deliverables. Mm. Wow, nice to hear. Let's hear from Tesfai. So I see Abel, uh, Abel, Abel's hand is up. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Good morning, Tesfai. Okay. Hello, Bert. Um So uh, last week uh, was actually, I think, it's a, it was a great week. Uh, actually, the challenge was all about understanding what we are going to do, and uh, it, 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 it was rather a new uh, uh, idea, concept for me. So I had to deal with that and uh, perform as I could uh, perform. So uh, I tried to manage everything by uh, using whatever I got, the concept, uh, any reference I could get, and uh, at, yeah, I think uh, uh, it went uh, good. I missed. I may, I may have missed some uh, pointers on the challenge, but uh, overall, uh, it was a really good week, and uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, next week's challenge. 
All right. Have you taken a look and into the eight challenge? <clears throat> I didn't hear that. Never. Have you taken a look into uh, week eight challenge? Uh, no, no, I, I, I haven't had a chance. I was actually uh, on my way to work, so I couldn't manage to see it. But uh, uh, actually, I'm on my phone, but I can uh, present after the master Martin and Binyam, if it's possible, if you have time, about last week's challenge. All right. All right. Okay. We see the spots are out. Okay. Time are out. Okay. So, guys, um, I think, yeah, we can hear from Ebo. And Birok, then know any other person, uh, then we start the presentation. I, I think we have some time. Now. Okay, Ebo. Can you hear? Hi, Ebo. Okay, the hand was generally in the, compared to the previous weekends, I was able to get a lot of more rest. Uh, and about the project, uh, the project took me so much time to complete because I, I didn't fully comprehend much of it uh, because of uh, I cut up with other tasks that I have to do. Uh, but I'm ready to do my best in this week's project. So that's what. Okay. So it's weird yeah, that um, you probably didn't do great for week seven. But did you manage to submit whatever I did? Yeah, I did a lot of it, but I was uh, I was not confident. But I did uh, all of it. Okay, Birok. Hi, Bru. Are you speaking? We can't hear you. Hi, Bru. So we can still hear you. Uh, so I think we can just start with Biniam with the presentation. Biniam, are you ready to just start? Then Martin can yes, <clears throat> yes, I'm ready. Yes. So the floor is yours. Let me share my screen. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. You. Okay. Hello, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'll try not to take too much time. Uh, I'll just go through my notebook and uh, <clears throat> if necessary, I'll go into some of the codes to explain some concepts. So basically the Everyone knows the challenge. The first uh, task is uh, loading uh, the data, but before we can load the data, we need to specify a specific region using uh, a polygon. So uh, as you can see, after initializing some of uh, the, <clears throat> the puzzles and the packages needed to perform this task, I defined a specific polygon, a five-point polygon, that means a, a pentagon polygon. Uh, since it's quite difficult to uh, figure out exactly where, where the points lie, I created another uh, method that can show you uh, where exactly your polygon lies before you go and plug it into the data feature Meter later on. So, as you can see here, this specific set of uh, coordinates look like something uh, on the map here. 
there are some buildings and roads uh, within it. Uh, if we zoom out a little, uh, it is found uh, within the state of Iowa in the uh, United States. So this is uh, the coordinates I selected. Of course, you can select anywhere you want uh, in the state. So once I selected that, I used the fish data method I created. Uh, that takes in the coordinates defined above uh, in the metadata path. The metadata uh, is uh, the specific information about the available that, that sits in uh, the cloud. Uh, the reason why we need this information is because uh, uh, we need to identify exactly where this polygon lies in terms of the data set since it's, there are separate data sets. Uh, if we don't know exactly where this polygon lies, we'll not be able to load it. So uh, after passing in the metadata pass, we also need to pass a uh, uh, pass for the loaded data. That means where to save it. And the pipeline uh, JSON, the pipeline JSON is uh, a JSON file that will be given to a PDAL uh, uh, pipeline method, which will perform the reading, filtering, and writing uh, steps for us. And this is uh, JSON, the PDAL JSON file uh, and what it looks like. <coughs> the, sorry. So the the, we will be using the readers.apt since the file is stored as an EPT format in the cloud. And we will be using the reader, the EPT reader, and then uh, we'll be filtering out some of uh, the unnecessary classes. That means since we're only interested in the uh, the ground and not the buildings and uh, other features that can, that can be included within the, that region, we'll be filtering those out. And then we'll be reprojecting it uh, to a format more uh, suitable for further processing. That means originally it's uh, in the 3857 uh, uh, format. That means uh, Mercator, I think it's Mercator format. It's an uh, uh, CRS uh, format that's widely used. But the output format we'll be using is 4326, which is basically longitude, latitude, and altitude. Uh, and then finally, the data will be saved in Iowa.csv file. So it's going to be a CSV file. Uh, once uh, the data is loaded, uh, you can see where the data is uh, acquired from here, the selected region is a full state, that is Iowa full state region. Number of loaded points are around 126,000 uh, uh, points. And uh, the loaded data will, will look like something like this uh, in the CC format. But the variables we are interested in are found at the last here. Uh, X, Y, and Z values. Uh, their precision is not uh, exactly what we want, so we'll be increasing their precision in order to identify the, the points from one another. Uh, so once we load the data, we'll be able to convert it into a GeoPandas data frame. Here, uh, we're loading the data and then converting it to GeoData your pandas data frame, you'll later look at it, uh, what exactly it looks like. Then uh, using a heat map plot, we're plotting the area. Uh, if you compare it to the previous map here. You can see that uh, it's accurately representing the features. And of course, since I told, I told you that uh, building uh, features and other unnecessary features will be omitted during the filtering stage. So that's why this, sp this space is empty. On the map, you can see it's some kind of building here. So this is our heat map. Uh, then using a 3D plot, we can also see the points here. 
So task two has been completed like this. That means the charting part. And the uh, grid sampling, now this is where uh, my code becomes a little bit uh, inaccurate. Uh, of course, uh, if I had time, uh, I would be able to, I would have been able to adjust some of the kings out, but uh, basically the grid resampling is supposed to uh, minimize the number of points and uh, arrange them into a grid. Uh, it's not exactly accurate, <clears throat> but this is how the output is. Of course, after the resampling, the number of points has come down to 6,053 from 126,000. And uh, this is the arrangement in, in the 3D format. You can see it's maintaining the general structure, but uh, not exactly in a grid format. Uh, so when it comes to the second part of task three, which is calculating TWI, <coughs> Uh, I've been struggling quite a lot to find uh, a Python uh, library that can calculate uh, TWI for me. Uh, I haven't been able to uh, find that. Uh, Martin told me there, uh, there was a way around some uh, library called Pydom, but uh, I just couldn't make it work because it was developed for uh, Python 2 and not Python 3, since I didn't want to go back to Python 2. Uh, I found another way, which is any, uh, a new library called ReachDem. It doesn't exactly have a, a TWI calculator, but it allows you to calculate the uh, variables needed to calculate the TWI. That means uh, I went back to the maths, and uh, uh, as you can see here, I used this formula that is a natural logarithm of uh, specific catchment area over the tangent of the curvature slope. So basically I tried to calculate the specific catchment area in curvature slope for each of the data points uh, using this formula here. Uh, let me just quickly show you. Yeah, so this formula, the Richtem library actually works with raster data. So and the first uh, few lines of code uh, is a process of converting it to a raster. That means our uh, uh, GeoPandas data frame to a raster uh, form. And then finally here, I will be calculating the slope. I will be showing you exactly what the result looks like uh, when I get back to the uh, example notebook. But basically I, I, I'm calculating the slope here first, here, and then, uh, next, I will be calculating the accumulation uh, using a D8 uh, algorithm, which is basically a way of calculating the catchment area. And then uh, on, at the last line here, I'm plugging it into the formula I previously showed you. That means uh, <clears throat> natural logarithm of the catchment area over the slope, the tangent of the slope. And there are some uh, that needs to be handled here uh, but uh, basically that's the uh, formula I used so to show you <coughs> what the result looks like this is uh, a chart of the slope the slope calculation the calculated slopes can be charted and uh, seen here some in some of the areas that means uh, the lighter areas are uh, highly um, slopes uh, slope slopey areas and the darker areas are the less slope areas. And then the catchment area can also be charted here. Uh, as you can see, the topology I used is the D8. Uh, and uh, other important informations are included here. Uh, I won't go into the details. And finally, the complete uh, GeoPandas data frame can be shown here. Uh, as you can see, there are some non values coming up in the TWI. This is due to negative slope uh, uh, that has not been converted to uh, positive. I think uh, the formula needs, uh, must work, must be calculated using a positive slope uh, percentage only, but I use the general slope values uh, since natural logarithms cannot take negative values. That's why it's showing non-value, but for positive ones, you can see that it's uh, calculating them nicely down here.
And other than that, the geometry is put in uh, a GeoPandas point uh, format, and the elevations are uh, also shown here. So yeah, basically that's how I implemented the project. So thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Biniam. So maybe before we go to Martin, we can hear if there are some questions from your colleagues, trainees, that they can probably ask you or compliment on your, your project. So for two minutes, then we move on. Sure. So Binyam, um, what's the purpose of uh, TWI? So what, that, what do you conclude after getting a result? What does it help you? The TWI basically tells us uh, the possibility of holding or accumulating uh, uh, wetness or <clears throat> water. So those more, with less slope are, tend to have a, a higher TWI from what I noticed. Uh, and uh, those with higher slopes have uh, the opposite uh, result. I, I don't uh, actually know the details of the science behind it, but uh, that's from, the, from my observations, that's uh, the conclusion I've reached. Okay. Thanks, Biniam. So why not go straight to Martin? All right, uh, thank you, Biniam, for the good presentation. So <clears throat> allow me to share my screen. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Martin. We can hear you. OK, are you able to view my screen? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, the, the 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 particular uh, the particular link to the the particular link to the just let me. The particular link to the article, uh, I've shared it over there uh, on the charts. Uh, so you can be able to go through it uh, uh, when you get an opportunity. The, the, the article that, the particular package that I, 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 I came up with, I called it GeoLeader and I installed it in Anaconda and uh, I also installed it in PyPy. So if you just a moment, I don't know. So if you want to check it out in Anaconda, you'll just uh, search for it and search through a uh, GeoLeader and also, which is this one, uh, this particular one. Uh, and this is how you install it. Though uh, I tried to find out why this, this thing came up, but uh, I, I'll go and check out whether I can remove the channels. I actually realized there is this C stands for channels and uh, we can do without the channel so that it can just be conda installed uh, GeoLeader. Then uh, on the PyPy, it's just the same, same name, uh, GeoLeader. Uh, that was the name that I found to be interesting, uh, this particular one. Just a moment. Yeah, that particular, uh, that particular name for GeoLeader is what I'm using to call my particular package and how it's installed is basically through pip install. Uh, you can pip install, that is, uh, you can just do pip install GeoLeader or conda install uh, th th that particular format. So um, we are going to go through, just, just a moment. Uh, 
Uh, sorry for that. No problem. Okay, yeah. So uh, the packages that I used uh, to build on top of the, on this particular package was uh, GeoPanda, SlashPy, Pedal, uh, the requests, the Matplotlib, NumPy, uh, PyProj, Shapely, uh, the, these are done func tools, uh, func tools and uh, JSON, those ones are inbuilt packages, uh, and also PIL, then uh, URL, also URL lib is also inbuilt, and uh, there's the raster IO, this is for plotting the rasters, and then there's the XML to dict, that was for the other tasks. So, uh, first of all, I had to figure out how I could be able to uh, collect all the, 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 the particular states uh, at first, I did this unknowingly because I didn't know that uh, there was already a, a particular file that was shared that had the list of all uh, the folders. So I just manually did it and then uh, I stored it. And then, uh, so I, I ended up storing uh, my particular, my particular one in uh, a file called uh, state.py, uh, mapa constants.py so I ended up just saving again all of them which uh, was to some extent redundant uh, because uh, it was already done uh, so yeah so that was the first thing that I did then the second thing was uh, getting the metadata uh, which I believe uh, Biniam has explained uh, how to get the particular type of metadata and the importance of it so for me what I was collecting was the year the points, the bounds, X, Y, Z, the EPSG, this was also redundant, it wasn't really necessary. Uh, the EPSG output, it just shows you the particular output that comes from that uh, particular um, polygon or that particular point uh, that you are trying to uh, work on at that particular point in time. So uh, I saved it into a CSV file and this was how the CSV uh, file turned out to be. Just let me open it in a much more, let me close, let me just, let me close this ones. So if we look at uh, this particular csv.py, uh, csv file, we can be able to, yeah. So this was how it looks like, the state or description, uh, the year, the points, the bounds, the X, the Y, the Z, EPSG, and EPSG output. For the EPSG, uh, it was not really uh, necessary because it's that way throughout the entire, uh, the entire, the, oh, the entire data set. So after that, uh, it was now, the next thing was now doing the literal loading of the GeoLeader. I did two functions to load the, uh, that particular leader data and the leading, the, for you to load a leader data, you have to execute a pipeline. So the pipeline, you can, you can approach it through two ways. You can use the shell, you can run it through the shell and that's why uh, over here I was running it through the shell. And the other way that you can be able to approach it uh, is through the uh, JSON, creating already the JSON file, and then you execute that particular pipeline by reading the JSON, then uh, executing that pipeline and also uh, generating the uh, GeoPandas data frame. So once you generate a GeoPandas data frame, it will just be the elevation uh, and the geometry that the points and the way uh, Biniam had explained, it's just the uh, longitude, latitude, and altitude, altitude for the elevation, uh, geometry, la longitude, and latitude. Uh, uh, at this particular point is in the geometry column uh, in the GeoPandas data frame. So after that, uh, it was just uh, being able to visualize the particular uh, data set that you have. So uh, once I run this, I'm able to save the particular uh, data set inside a file, uh, just as you can see over here inside a file, which uh, I called ioa.tif because those are the ones which I was able to find its particular its particular longitude, latitude, and altitude, uh, so that it, uh, its particular boundaries which were relevant. The, though I searched online and in uh, some articles, and I saw that if you want to uh, actually access uh, particular longitude, altitude, th those particular boundaries in a particular in a particular map 
you can use the entwine uh there's there's a particular there's a particular link that i think um maybe i'll i'll, I'll get to share it later on uh, where you can be able to search for different uh, longitudes and latitudes or for those boundaries so that you can be able to come and put them and you can be able to uh plot whatever boundary you want in that particular state so uh if we take a look this is how the raster looks like we can see that it has all this for me i i didn't um do the i didn't break down the classification uh to the to the minute details uh but i instead uploaded this so that i could be able to see or uh, those other structures which might uh which which can just show you that this is real data because at times when you don't have anything in that particular in that particular map it can be a bit confusing so that really helps to some extent so this these particular things that are over here you can see those are just buildings and all those other things uh and the the the, the, the particular and then the the that the, the map itself which is where the land the land is and so that was uh, for a particular data set. But when plotting the 3D, I had to actually uh, go about and see how I could uh, filter. Because if you look at my uh, 3D plot, if you see over here, there are some outliers. That is just to show that there are some figures that are going past the normal altitude. And uh, there's some figures that are going past the normal altitude and that was uh, causing some bit of uh, confusion. So uh, for you to be able to get a clearer view, you can standardize so that you can be able to see first of all what particularly is inside it. Then you can go and reclassify in the JSON file so that you can be able to uh, get your particular uh, land data that you exactly want. So uh, when we plot the 2D, it was also uh, showing all the features that are in that particular data and uh, this was how i was plotting uh, my 2d map so uh for me i was standardizing and the way i was standardizing was i was using distance uh that's what i had seen uh in that particular uh in in this particular in this particular uh example you are told that uh when you want to do a deeper resolution or a lighter resolution you can be able to just give it like for example you can give it five meters and when you give it five meters it can be able to uh, return for you the uh, interpolated data through the elevation so uh that was what i was also doing and that's how i was uh, i was interpolating actually uh, there's uh there's a method to interpolate to the grid there's a method to interpolate to the grid from scipy and that's what i was using so if we if you use a distance of five we can be able to see that the image now appears a bit uh, lighter and this can be able to like uh, show you uh what it, it 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 gives you a clearer picture of the land how it looks like uh the places where are up and down and all that so when you when you compare it with the previous uh result you can be able to see there's a huge difference and it can allow you to make uh, even more inferences on when viewing it from a 3d level uh, when you do it on a on a 2d uh, level and you standardize uh, what happens is that it appears as though like we have zoomed in into that particular uh, data so that is what i realized uh, from standardizing via the distance uh, as you can see this one it appears this particular portion appears closer to the screen as compared to this other one so you can zoom it's it was like a uh, sort of like zooming in but i saw that they were calling that uh subsampling uh where you get a particular portion and you try to get it in levels uh so that you can map it to the uh to something called a voxel or a box and then you can now uh, display it in a 3d or a 2d heat map whichever that uh, you feel is appropriate for that particular scenario then uh the next thing was uh generating the topographical wetness index i also myself i really struggled uh going through this particular uh concept so i had to do it all the way from scratch but i borrowed what i was trying to tell uh Binyam is that uh, i borrowed um I borrowed uh, the concepts from that particular package. I went and I went and looked at how they implemented it, and I also tried to do uh, more or less the same. So uh, first of all, uh, it was calculating the area into square meters because when I was looking in that particular 
when I was looking at that particular formula, this one over here, e, this is the area and B is the slope. And what they were saying is that the area should be in square meters and the slope should be in radians, that is in terms of the measurements. So when you find the natural log of A over the tangent of the slope, you can be able to get the topographical wetness index, which is just basically a measure for uh, how wet the, 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 the how, how the data is, how water is accumulating on certain points. Uh, so when I was doing the calculation, I was getting quite high figures because when I was looking at the topographical wetness index, uh, the ranges, uh, it should, there, there is that place where it can range from the negatives uh, to the positives, but it, it, should, it should not uh, go beyond, um, it shouldn't go beyond 50. Uh, if you look at uh, the way they were doing their calculations. So I was trying to figure out like how I could be able to uh, make it to be uh, substandard. And so I was just playing around with this particular formula, uh, the natural log, uh, the area uh, of the polygon, the tangent of the slope, just the same uh, particular formula that uh, was being used uh, in the in, in, the, in the description that is above over there. So when I was plotting, there was nothing really that I could be able to say that I am able to infer from this particular image. But when I looked at it uh, more keenly, I was able to see that there are some places where it's more condensed. It's uh, like it's more, uh, the lines are more concentrated. And then there are areas where this particular, this, this color uh, was uh, was able to assist in uh, in helping me to make uh, much more inferences uh, on this particular data set. So I was looking at the places which were darker, those were the places where uh, the water was accumulating more and the places which were lighter, which is for example over here, over here and over here uh, are the places where the water was not accumulating more. That was uh, what I was trying to uh, check uh, when I was looking at uh, the particular uh, articles that are out there so that they can just give me some bit of inferences so that I could be able to write on my particular article, uh, which I've shared in the charts. So uh, I went ahead and did uh, the bonus tasks. Uh, that is uh, these bonus tasks, a uh, bonus task one, two, three. Uh, so the bonus task one was basically just uh, getting uh, soil data. So like, for example, if you give it a particular if you give it a particular polygon, if you give it a particular polygon, it should be able to return for you uh, the mu key. The mu key is basically going to tell you what type of soil is, uh, what type of soil is in that particular uh, place. So it could be sandy soil, it could be loam soil, it could be, there's the, there's the mu keys. You can, you can just go and uh, check the mu keys in their particular website. So uh, when I plotted it, uh, I was able to get just a particular, I, I looked for a particular polygon and then I plotted it and I could be able to see that uh, I, 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 I wanted to figure out, uh, you can, if you go and check these indexes, uh, for example, if you go and check for 45, 69, 83, I believe it should be, uh, it should be 46, this, uh, let me just quickly confirm. I don't want 45, 69, 83. Uh, it should be 45, 69, 83, um, Yuki. It should be which type of soil? It should be which type of soil? Uh, can you really remember? Uh, there's a, uh, there's uh, normally, okay, I, uh, here is a, uh, where is it? Yeah, this is the mu name, the mu key. So uh, th these are the different types of, uh, the different types of soils that uh, will come as a result. Um, I'm trying to, I'll, I, I, I think what I'll do in future is also to give them the real names rather than giving them the, uh, besides the mu keys also give them the real name so that you can know that maybe in this particular region the soil that is accumulated on this particular side it could be sandy soil maybe the soil that is 
uh, accumulated in this particular side, it could be loam soil, the soil that's, that is accumulated in this particular side, it could be this and this and that uh, type of soil, uh, so that it can be able to give you like, um, rather than just using the keys. And also another thing was that uh, this, this, there was this one which I had forgotten and I, and, and, and I put uh, the white, uh, the white, the white, I put the color white, I'd forgotten, and uh, once it comes out, it you can't be able to see it, but I can be able to see it if you, uh, I can be able to see it because I'm, I'm looking directly, I can be able to see that uh, it's the place, there are some places, if you notice, the connections are not complete, but if you realize the connections, the places where the connection is not complete, it's filled with the white, uh, it's filled with that white uh, color. So like, for example, over here, all the way up to this other side, uh, this place, that particular place has that type of soil. So the other thing was uh, this, the next task was the one for, uh, the next one was for writing code to interact with the Sentinel public API data set. Uh, so you can submit a boundary and then you can be able to receive the dates uh, with the imagery available within the boundary. Uh, and then you can be able to submit the dates for download and visualization of the satellite data. So. Uh, from my end, I just uh, went ahead and got the particular, uh, I gave it just a simple form of data set. Uh, for this type of API, you need to authenticate, so you can just use uh, the requests, uh, just the normal HTTP basic authentication, because here they don't, uh, they, they don't yet give you tokens, like uh, normal APIs, you'll normally have tokens to access them. So when you just, uh, run the dot txt that's the text that the result you have to change it from xml to json because uh, i think the people who are developing this particular endpoint were using uh, number one they are using and i i believe they're using the it's called uh, this soap a protocol to generate it and which most likely they are using languages like uh, java uh, or or, or or Visual Basic or uh, C Sharp, mostly those are the ones which will uh, generate the SOAP protocol. So that's why uh, for this particular data, it comes in XML format. And so you have to convert it into JSON so that you can be able to use it. So I converted it into JSON. And then there's another function for JSON the, that is used to uh, convert JSON into a data frame. So again, it will convert it into a data frame. Then you can be able to get your columns and then uh, you can be able to get your dates. And then after getting your dates, you can be able to uh, get uh, that particular date belongs to which particular pol polygon and which particular sentinel as it was measured. So the only thing that I think I was remaining with this particular task was the visualization, uh, which is something that uh, I'll consider. The other bonus task three, that was for uh, getting data set from the climate data. I tried to look for uh, this particular uh, I try to look for these particular data sets, but most of them are hosted in the Google GPUs. Uh, and in in the Google GPUs, there is a way you have to go about, um, you have to like be part of the developer, uh, whatever, so that you can be able to uh, go through the entire, this authentication and all these things. So uh, I was just going through the entire process and it I caught up with time. So I wasn't able to complete on this uh, bonus task three, uh, but that was uh, the far that I was able to go. On the particular, uh, on the particular documentation, this was how my documentation looks like. Uh, so, uh, just, uh, so if you want to install it, you can come here, uh, and then you just do pip install. Julie, I'd forgotten to add the one for uh, Conda install. Uh, and then on the other hand, there is uh, different modules. That's the loader module, the fetch module, the runner module, the visualize module, the plot raster, and all of them have different functions which are used for different particular things. So this one is to load the GeoLeader. A uh, GeoLeader was that uh, data that has been loaded. Uh, then this is the to load a pipeline and uh, fetch metadata was from fetching the metadata running. This was just for running simple commands. And then this was for plotting, showing plotting, plotting, and then uh, the standardizing. Uh, so far, so good. I, I was just able to standardize via the distance, but there are other ways of standardizing uh, that you can be able to use. 
uh, but for now I was using by distance and the other one was uh, getting the topographical wetness index. So if you just want to study like a particular uh, function, what it does, the arguments it takes and what it returns, so it can you can be able to come and check it out over here. And I believe in the future I'll be able to now add uh, more uh, code references so that somebody can be able to uh, check how these functions are used and how they can be able to generate scripts from this particular um, from this particular uh, package. So, and then also another thing was uh, I'll add more more ways of standardizing the code, and then I'll add more other indexes because a topographical wetness index is just one index. There is the there are many other indexes that can be calculated. Uh, from the from the from 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 geographical data, uh, just to give a few is the O'Callaghan, uh, there's the D8, there's the there's there's other, there are many other calculations that can be done, and it's good to be able to use them. So uh, I wanted to show how the I our. Uh, over here, how you can also be able to uh, get the topographical wetness index uh, from a particular software called QGIS. Uh, yeah, so let me first of all just load the particular data. Uh, so if I have to load it, I have to come to uh, home. Are, are, are you able to hear me? I, I don't know. Yeah but you oh, can do your best on finishing uh, very few minutes as we are out of time okay so uh so uh let me just load uh, so for here you'll just be able to communicate with it via the dot uh, tifs because this one it's the it communicates with this via the raster the raster images and then uh if you want to do uh, the raster to calculate the slope will just come over here and we'll click uh, calculate the slope and then you will come and uh, just use a particular formula over here that is called the Zev, Zev, the that that particular formula and then you can be able to uh, uh, click just run for you to be able to uh, calculate the slope so once it's calculated the slope as you can be able to see uh, this is uh, how it looks like. This is how it looks like. Uh, sorry. I think I have reduced the scale so much. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, I've increased it again. Uh, yeah, so this is how the scale looks like. And then you can just... Uh, come to the layer properties. This is where you'll be able to, and then you can be able to uh, get this, uh, the information concerning just how the slope was calculated. If you come to the info and then, uh, yeah, I, I've forgotten the other commands for, I've forgotten the other places where the other commands are for calculating the, now, after getting the slope, you are supposed to now go directly to uh, saving this data as you just save this. You're supposed to save this as maybe like slope.gif. Then uh, once you save this, you open it the next time and then uh, you run the topographical wetness index. So you can also run the topographical wetness index through the QGIS, this particular software. Uh, but um, it's, I can't really remember the rest of the, the rest of the commands from here uh yeah so i'll just end from there uh i'll end from there uh and i'll hand it over back to everest thank you martin um well done overall and thank you for taking taking us through your your work excellent but there is a question on 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 uh, on, on the chat from michael Rafa. Uh, <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for that, Binyam, and uh, all you guys. Yeah. So, for generating the documentation for me, I was using uh, Phoenix, the, S, the one that Yabibel recommended, and I was using the RTD theme. I was just using the RTD theme, and then uh, there are 
many other things you could be able to add like maybe you it can be able to detect functions it can be able to detect classes it can be able to detect comments it can be able to detect all those things it just depends on how uh you have programmed your particular documentation yeah thank you thanks martin maybe you can share that to slack so <clears throat> others can probably go refer to it uh probably it's a nice one so you guys thank you so much for the contribution and your time to during this um first stand up of week eight so as i mentioned <clears throat> then the introduction to challenge will start at 10 so you guys you can go can be going through the document uh <clears throat> sorry can be going through the documents, the challenge documents, so you can probably get in familiar or trying to also queue some questions that you can ask during the intro. So, well done, guys. Uh, all the best. Wish you a nice week ahead. Uh,